it's Larry. I'm back again to uh, do another homebrew. This time I'm doing a Belgian wit ale that I uh, affectionately call my Lara Garden. Uh, as you can tell, it's uh, you know, a hybrid compound uh, term from Larry and Whole Garden. Um, and as you can probably guess by the name Whole Garden, if you know what Whole Garden is, it's uh, what a lot of people consider to be the epitome of Belgian wit style of beers. A lot of people think of uh, Blue Moon or uh, more recently Shock Top from uh, Anheuser-Busch as examples of this category. I go a lot further than that and I uh, aspire to do Whole Garden. Um, so if you've never had Whole Garden but you've had Blue Moon and you like it, um, try Whole Garden. Uh, that's all I can say. Try it. But today I'll be making my clone of it and this is going to be sort of uh, my interpretation of what I, uh, of what I like. Um, in, in, in my Belgian wit beers uh, with some orange peel, coriander seed, uh, Belgian wit beer yeast, all made and uh, kegged for consumption at my Armed Forces Day party next month. So stay tuned, I'll show you what I do with this. The grain bill consists of three basic ingredients. Uh, you know, we have uh, five pounds of pale malt, two row pale malt. Uh, this is actually uh, a variant of the recipe that I normally do. I normally use a Pilsner malt, which is sort of a lighter malt, light in color, used for things like lager style beers. I have a big bag, a 50 pound sack of this stuff uh, nearby here, so I want to start using some of this malt up. So I'm going to try something different this time, go with a basic two row pill malt uh, for my base malt. Four pounds of unmalted wheat. These are flaked wheats, flaked wheat. Uh, which is uh, sort of a pre-cooked wheat that's uh, been gelatinized during the cook cooking process so it'll go into my mash tun and uh, cook better. So that's key though, no malted wheat. If you use malted wheat you'll get a different flavor profile. It must be unmalted. Also one pound of flaked oats which has also been uh, pre-cooked and gelatinized for use in a mash. Also unmalted. The oats add a nice silky uh, smooth texture to the beer which is really desirable in this style of wood beer. So let's crush them up and get them in the mash tun. This here is what I'm doing to uh, crush the grain. I have a, a malt mill and a five gallon bucket below that will catch the crushed malt when I crush it. I've replaced my little uh, turn handle with a cordless drill and I put a bunch of my pale malt and, uh, and my flaked uh, oats and wheat eventually too into this thing, I crush them up, and here's the process. Just like that. Uh, I'll keep putting more grain in, crush them through until I uh, get all my grain uh, crushed. And here is the result. Uh, got about uh, 10 pounds of grain in here, uh, like I described before, a mixture of the of wheat, oat, and barley. So this is ready to go in the mash tun. My uh, mash and uh, my strike water from my mash is heating up right now. It's just about ready to be put in there. So uh, while we're killing some time, I'm going to take a look at my mash tun, just to let those who know don't know what a mash tun is, uh, or who have not watched my other homebrew videos, I've taken a a seven or seven and a half gallon cooler. I've um, replaced the um, the uh, valve or with the ball valve here, uh, and the, and I also um, on the inside have this little manifold system. And what this does is that you put the you put the grain in here, you fill it up with with, with my hot water. Let's steep like like a hot oatmeal cereal. Which, huh, oatmeal's funny because that's oats are in this recipe. Anyway, so uh, it fills up, it steeps gets all the uh, sugars out of the grain and this manifold system has a bunch of little tiny holes uh, drilled on the underside of all the tubing and it just sort of and so the weight of the water will push down uh, the siphon from the from the outside of the spigot with a little hose I'll put on it will suck out uh, the liquid from the grain through this little manifold and leave the spent grain behind. One thing I forgot to mention that in the meantime while the um, strike water was heating up. I put a, about a gallon of uh, near boiling water in here already and sealed it up so I can preheat my mash tun to uh, about the right temperature um, to put the uh, grain and the strike water in. If I left this at room temperature and put the uh, hot water and grain in, I would have to account for that by uh, raising the mash temperature probably by about another 10 degrees. So 
Um, so, so just to keep that in mind for those trying to imitate my, my recipe. Green is in the mash tun, ready to pour on the strike water at 163.8 degrees. All right, my mash, uh, my strike water for my mash is right about one. Well, it should be about 163.8. It's not quite there yet. Well, maybe it is. But when it, when it reaches about 163.8, well, no, it's, it's getting there. Uh, this goes into the mash tun with the grain. Oh, there we go. Ready to go. All right, I got the mash tun filled with the strike water and the and the grain. Stabilize it at about 152 degrees with about 16 quarts of 163.8 degree water and it settled in about 152. So I'm going to let this uh, put the lid back on, put the lid on, tighten it up really good and I'm going to let it uh, sit for about 90 minutes. Uh, the extra time, I usually let it go for about an hour, but uh, for this kind of beer with uh, unmalted wheat, um, I found it generally to be better if it sat longer. So uh, let's wait about 90 minutes, about an hour and a half from now, and we'll come back and continue. Okay, while the um, mash is mashing, uh, I want to talk about the, uh, the um, additions that I'll be putting into the boil in a little bit while they're all together here. Uh, what I have here, starting from the left, is, a, is about a half ounce of U.S. Golding's hops, pellets, uh, for bitterness and a little flavor, about a half ounce of Saz hops for um, flavor and aroma. Also uh, tr traditional um, additions for Belgian wet beer are bitter orange peel, not sweet but bitter. Um, you can put sweet in your beer but it will give it a different flavor than I want at least. Uh, coriander seed which is not yet cracked, I'll, I'll have to crack this right before I put it in. Um, most people think it's the orange peel that gives the um, wit beers like their orange citrusy characteristic. That is not true. This bitter orange peel adds a little bit of bitterness to the beer in place of the hops. Uh, what the citrus aroma and flavor most people think is orange is actually the, is the uh, coriander seeds. If you pick one up and you crack it and split it in half and smell it, um, that's that's that herbal flavor. And then. Uh, another addition is about three tea bags worth of chamomile tea, chamomile, whatever. Um, so that all goes into the kettle at different stages, and I'll walk through those when they um, occur. It's been uh, 90 minutes. Let's take a look at what we got here. I got uh, my cereal in there. My mash is all ready. No, oh, I smell that. That smells like really good. It smells like kind of a mixture between cooked cereal and near beer almost you know so there's the grains it's all in there all I gotta do is stir it up uh, and I'm gonna do a batch spar which means I'm gonna drain the liquid out of here into my kettle down below and I will then be adding more water stir it again and drain it again um, maybe one to two times to get the volume I need in my kettle now I've got the uh, the mash drain through the spigot and into my kettle through this little hose here, nice and gently, just to not introduce any oxygen. Uh, they call it hot side aeration, and it's bad for the flavor of beer. So you kind of get started as a trickle, and then you can kind of uh, let it go full blast here and fill it up. And I'm going to, uh, when this drains out, I'm going to add some more hot water to it, stir it up again, and drain it yet again and maybe a third time up until I get to the volume I need of about six and a half gallons. The, uh, the kettle's boiling now. Um, I'm doing a 75 minute boil. So uh, I'm starting the timer now at 75 minutes, counting down to zero. And at the 60 minute mark, I'll be throwing in my first uh, batch of hops. We're at the 60 minute mark. Time for my first uh, addition here. I have uh, a half ounce of the uh, Golding's hops. Going to go in at the 60 minute mark. So at the 45 minute mark in 15 minutes, I'll do the next one. Oh wait, hold on a minute. No, that's not right. All right, we're at the uh, T minus 15 mark. Ready for my uh, final addition of Saz hops. I'm going to put that in there. Then I'm going to put my uh, immersion cooler in there to sanitize, which will be used to cool the stuff down in about 15 more minutes. All right, five minutes left in the schedule. 
time to add the uh, or the uh, orange peel, the coriander, and my chamomile tea. So I'm gonna throw in the a full ounce here of the orange peel, the ounce of cracked and crushed coriander. I ran through my grain mill to break up, and my three tea bags worth of chamomile tea. And I'm going to stir that in and set the timer for five more minutes and then it'll be ready to cool down and put into the fermenter. All right, time for flame out. Uh, zero hour has approached. I'm going to turn off the, I'm going to cover, cover it up as best I can, turn off the heat and I'm going to turn on the water to my immersion cooler or chiller and I'm going to cool this thing down to about 75 degrees in about 20 minutes. The uh, fermenter is filled uh, and aerated. I put an oxygen stone in there, or the bottle of oxygen, and I injected it with some fresh oxygen. And uh, you can see the nice and light color of the beer. It's going to be cloudy. And uh, I'm going to add the yeast right now. Alright, time to add the yeast. Got about a 750 milliliter um, yeast starter going here for the past few days. Going to go ahead and uh, add that right to there. Pour it all in. And that's going to give me the yeast that I need for the beer. Five and a half gallons of beer ready to ferment. Got the airlock on. Got the uh, Get everything in there, about five and a half gallons, uh, nice light color, uh, a little cloudy. It'll still be cloudy when it's done, but not this cloudy. And, uh, oh, I can't wait to try this. Okay, it's the following day. Already within uh, less than 24 hours, I got a nice big uh, the yeast, uh, yeast uh, krausen, I think they call it there, growing. Uh, it's uh, fermenting quite well. So let's let, let's let this uh, ferment the rest of the way out over the course of about the next week. And... Uh, age it for several more days and then we will uh, take it. 14 days have passed and it is ready to keg the beer. But let's take a look at the color here uh, and the results uh, while they're still in the carboy. You can see the uh, beer has lightening color, nice nice uh, pale orange uh, color to it. I really like that a lot. It settled out a lot. It's still yeasty uh, and still cloudy. It, it is a wheat beer but most of the yeast had set, uh, is already settled out down the bottom there. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is siphon it from the carboy into my five gallon Cornelius keg and I'm going to pressurize it, carbonate it, and uh, serve it at my party. Siphon in progress. Got my little auto siphon tube down in there and uh, it's siphoning a nice very clear, clear beer. Very light colored beer all the way down into my five gallon uh, Keg. You can see it's start. It's about halfway full already. So when it's done, I'm going to uh, put the cap on, pressurize it, and carbonate it. All right. For those who don't know what this is, this is a hydrometer reading. I have a flask or a little uh, cylinder here with my hydrometer um, device inside. Uh, this is what you do to measure uh, the alcohol content of the beer. And my reading on this one is 1.008 specific gravity. So. I wrote down the original, can't remember what it is right now, but I'll use both those numbers and I'll convert it to a approximate alcohol content. The day has arrived, it's time to drink the beer. Um, for, for, you, for you watching the video, it's probably only been several minutes of uh, video time. For me, it's been three, uh, about three and a half weeks of anticipation. So uh, I'm really eager to try this beer, so let's get right to it. The beer is ready to drink. Let's give it a pour and see what it looks like. Oh yeah, look at that, nice light color, a little bit of an orange hue to it. Nice, nice head. Look at that beer. Oh man, I'm going to have to give this a taste test. Yum, yum, yum. Time for the taste test. Oh man, another successful beer brewed by myself. Oh, the Belgian wit style 
just delicious. Oh man, uh, definitely a keeper. So uh, thanks for watching.